Well, greetings again today in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Wonderful Wednesday, Wednesday in the Word, with Bishop Lawrence Kirby and the St. Paul Baptist Church, 1123 Center Street, Racine, Wisconsin. How delighted we are that you have chosen to just study the Word of God with us. We hope that you will push the share button and share this Word, amen, with your friends and family. Uh, you have my permission to use it for private or personal Bible study with a small group if you want to do that. And if you have any questions or comments, you can always inbox us and let us know what those are. I do want to encourage us to be a part of the worship ministry of the St. Paul Church. Each and every Sunday we are live streaming. We are on Facebook. We also have in-person worship every Sunday at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. We do practice the CDC guidelines, wear your mask. Uh, you're subject to a temperature check. We do social distancing. And again, also, I want to encourage those of you who have not gotten vaccinated, please get the vaccination so we can get back to life as it was before the pandemic. If you do that, it would be greatly appreciated. Let me encourage you to support the local ministry. We believe in tithes and offerings here in our church. Tithe means 10%. Every time God blessed me financially, According to the scriptures of Levi, the book of Leviticus, chapter 21, Malachi, chapter 3, Matthew, chapter 23, verse 23, we ought to practice tithing. It is God's way for us to support the ministry of the church. And yes, the St. Paul Church has a worldwide ministry, and we love for you to support us through tithes and offerings, through a Thanksgiving offering as you appreciate the Bible study and the worship, through a seed offering you want to invest in this ministry. Thank you so much for being a part of our ministry again today. We are studying on discipleship this year. And today I will continue my study on one of the great doctrines of the Bible, uh, the gospel church. So get your Bibles in your hand in just a few moments. After prayer, we'll start our Bible study together. But at this time, we'll be blessed with a word of prayer as usual by Deacon Griffin, who is so kind to be with us each and every time we take this study. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, we'll bow our heads for a brief prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you again for just waking us up today to see thank a new day. You, thank you. Father, we know that if it weren't for you, Lord, we wouldn't have got out of our bed today, Lord. We wouldn't have had a reasonable portion with, of health and strength, Lord. So we want to thank you right now for that, Lord. Father, I ask you to just watch over Bishop and First Lady, Lord. Just continue to keep them close to you, Lord, and, and continue to just prop them up on any leaning side, Lord. Father, we thank you that they're the shepherds of this house, Lord, and, and we thank you for their teaching and, and their encouragement and their love, Lord. Father, I ask a, another blessing for, for our teachers right now, Lord, and any of our educators or those in the uh, education system, Lord. I just ask that you just continue to watch over them and keep them yes, close to you, Lord. Yes, continue Lord. to bless yes, them so that they can continue to educate our children, Lord, and, and continue yes, to bless yes, our children Lord. and keep them close to you so that, that they can stay safe, Lord, and that they can continue to do the best that they can do during these trying times, Lord. Father, I ask that you just continue to watch over those families that may have been touched by COVID, Lord, those that may have lost loved ones and that have lost Thank jobs, you, Lord, Lord, or are just going through um, any kind of financial stress or mental stress, Lord. Just continue to um, prick their hearts and let them know that you're right there with them, Lord. Father, you, you didn't bring us this far to leave us, Lord, so we know that as long as we continue to lean and depend on you, we will see it through to the other side, Lord. So, Father God, I thank you for, for your encouragement, Lord. I thank you for for being that rock that I can lean on, Lord. And I thank you for being that counselor that I can call on, Lord. So, Father, I just ask that you just continue to just move in this world, Lord. Move yes, in our yes, city, yes, move yes, in our country, yes, Lord. Yes, just yes. seal up all the violence that's going on around us, Lord. Just continue to have your way with your people, Lord, and, and continue to bring more people to you, Lord. And use us, Lord. Let us be that light that draws people onto you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father yes, God, Lord. I just thank you right now for... For, for just you being you all by yourself, Lord. We thank you for the blessings that you continue to pour upon your people, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Father, Lord. just continue to just look at our sick and shut-in list, Lord, and touch those that may be on it, those that may 
be facing any kind of ailments, Lord. Just continue to just touch them and heal them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Lord. Yes. Just continue to um, be that light in their life, Lord. So I know sometimes when you're sick or you're not doing well and you can get down, but as long as we can lean on you, Lord, you that light. You shine in our lives, Lord. You can uplift us, Lord. You can do anything. And we know that through you, all things are possible, Lord. Last but not least, Father, I just want to say thank you for sending your darling son, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for letting him stand in that gap so that we can have that relationship we have with you, Lord. Thank you for him so that we can bring our problems and lay them at your feet, Lord. Thank you for him so that we can lean on you and we can depend on you and you can hear our prayers and yes, hear our cries yes, and hear our moans lord so yes, we thank you for your darling son jesus lord yes, yes. last but not least father we just want to love you and adore you and praise you and give you all the glory yes, in the lord. darling son jesus name yes, amen 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 and again we want to thank deacon griffin for that fervent prayer i know that bishop kirby and the saint paul church and the prayer warriors here are praying for you if you and your family have a special prayer request uh, just hit us up on Messenger or uh, um, Amen on our website and just let us know what that prayer request is and give us the information to get back in touch with you. And we'll be praying for you that God will give you healing, deliverance, and victory that your prayer most certainly will be answered. Uh, Bible study, you got your Bibles, you got your Bibles. Every Wednesday we always repeat these words together so we know we're on the same page. You got your Bibles? Okay, here we go. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. God's holy word. God's holy word. It is a lamp under my feet. It is a lamp under my feet. It is a light under my pathway. It is a light onto my pathway. I will hide his word. I will hide his word. In my heart. In my heart. That I might not. That I might not. Sin against it. Sin against it. I will read it. I will read it. I will study it. I will study it. I will meditate on it. I will meditate on it. And I will pray. And I will pray. That God. That God. Will help me. Will help me. To do. To do. What is written therein. What is written therein. Amen. Amen. We are together. Together. And what I've been trying to share in recent weeks is that as Christians, as disciples, there are some fundamental biblical truths we call doctrine that we need to be familiar with. And so I've been sharing those, and this may be number 11 or 12, and I start uh, today where I left off last week talking about the gospel church. Let me again read this uh, statement, concise statement about the church, and then we'll look at some scriptures to support these words that we're sharing with you. Here we go. We believe that the church is a congregation of baptized believers associated by covenant or agreement. We come together and we agree in faith and in fellowship. We believe that the church is that body of baptized believers who come together in faith and in fellowship around or observing what we call the audiences of the church. We believe there are two biblical audiences of the church. They are baptism and Lord's Supper. We'll take those up at a later discussion, but we believe that the church meets together, and one of the things that the church does when she meets is to take up the audiences of the church, that being, again, baptism and Lord's Supper. Remember, we believe the local church is a body of not just believers, but baptized believers. We believe that God has given his church gifts that ought to be exercised, gifts, rights, and privileges that are given to us by the word of God. Uh, we believe that there are leaders in the church, deacons and, uh, bis uh, and pastors or bishops, and we believe that those persons are biblical offices. Now, last week, we also uh, looked in great detail at Matthew chapter number 16, verses 13 through 19. And just let me just say a word about it before I go to the other scriptures. It is there that we first see the word church mentioned in the New Testament. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell or Hades shall not prevail against it. We believe as Jesus establishes a church or is going to establish it, it is based upon the faith and the belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Now, to be sure, when we talk about church, we're not talking about a denomination. I've tried to make that clear. We talk about a body of baptized believers. All baptized believers, hear me, hear me, hear me, 
All baptized believers who are united in faith and covenant are part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? But you must be a believer to be a part of the church. We are born into the church like we are born into the physical world. Jesus teaches in John chapter 3, if you want to be in the kingdom of God or be a part of the church of God, you must be born into it. Okay, okay. Let's look at some other scriptures. The gospel of Matthew, let's look in that gospel again. The 18th chapter, oh, let's look at about the 17th verse, I believe. Matthew chapter 18, verse 17. And here we mention Jesus, here we see Jesus mentions the word church again in the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 18 and verse 17. And if he refuses to hear them, let it go to the church. But if he refuses to hear the church, let him be looked upon as a heathen and as a tax collector. Jesus is talking about how uh, to be disciplined and that kind of thing and how the church has been given the direction to discipline. And he says, if a person does not hear the word of the church, then you can turn aside or what we call not fellowship with that person before. But the person reading this verse, the 17th verse in Matthew chapter 18, is so that we can see that Jesus is here talking about the church, okay? He's talking about the church. The second time we see the word church mentioned here in the New Testament, okay? All right, let's look at some other scriptures now where uh, in the, in the uh, epistles or the letters, the Apostle Paul particularly is giving some directions and instructions concerning the church. Now let's turn and look at what he says to one of the churches in the first century that was located in the city of Corinth. The book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians were written to the church that was located in Corinth. Okay? So we're going to look at um, the book of Corinth, the letter to the church of Corinth, the book of Corinthians, chapter number 1. And there are extensive verses, but they are so important that I want to try to take my time and just kind of read through these verses, and I hope you'll follow along with us as you read. We're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to start reading with verse 2. All right, we talked about what the church is, baptized believers, people of faith, people of fellowship, people who partake of the audiences, a people who have gifts and rights and privileges. He's talking to that church right here in the text of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with verse 2. Open your Bibles, keep me honest to the text. If I stop a little bit, you can kind of pick it up and carry it on. We're reading through, I think, the 13th verse. Kind of a long passage, but I think it's very important because he's talking to the church. A body of baptized believers. Here's what he says to us. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, but all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So he's talking to the church everywhere, not just in Corinth, but the church that is located in Racine or, or in Nashville or Memphis or Africa or maybe West Africa, Liberia or South Africa, wherever it is. He is talking to those believers who are called of God and sanctified of God and who call on the name of Jesus and allow him to be their Lord. Amen. Here's what it says. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which is given to you by Christ Jesus. You see that, don't you? Look at it. Look at it that ye were enriched in everything by him in all utterances and in all knowledge. God has blessed us to so enrich each and every one of us. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you came short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end. 
Look at that. He's going to be with you to the end. He'll never leave you or forsake the church. That ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means the second coming of Christ. He's going to keep the church, the, the sanctified, the call of God, the baptized believers. He's going to keep it to the day Jesus Christ comes back after you. After who? After the church. Listen to it in verse 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called into the fellowship of his son. A body of baptized believers agreeing in faith. There it is. And in fellowship. In his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together with the same mind and the same judgment. So God wants us to be as one. God is not a part of all the division that we see going on in what we call sometimes the local church of various denominations. God is not a part of any division or any schisms in the body of Christ. He wants all of us to be as one. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, that those of Cleophas' household, that there are contentions among you. Paul says God doesn't like that. He doesn't like that. Now I say this, that each of you say, I am of a Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? What he's trying to say to the church is God expects there to be unity, sameness, oneness in the body of Christ. And I'm going to say this again. All the division that religion has caused among the people of God, God has no part in it. God is not a part of it. God is a part of unity and oneness and togetherness. And listen, God is still calling the church to be together. God is still calling the church to be as one. We are the body of Christ. All baptized believers in Jesus Christ make up the, the body of Christ. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 2 through 13. All right? All right? If we together say amen. Amen. Okay, let's read another passage. The book of Acts. Let's turn back to the book of Acts. Uh, let's look in the second chapter. The book of Acts, the second chapter. And in, in Acts chapter 2, we see this body of baptized believers meeting together in Jerusalem in an upper room, in a room, and there they are praying that God will empower the church, the baptized believers, to be his witnesses beginning in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the utmost parts of the earth. So we see the early church praying. Uh, we see the early church after they praying, waiting patiently uh, for the Lord. And then we see the early church with the power of God and the person of the Holy Spirit moving in the life of the early church. And listen to these words. We talk about the church being a body of baptized believers. I won't take the time to read all of Acts chapter 2 to you, but I think you would appreciate it if you read it at your leisure. But let me begin with verse number 41. As he's talking about these believers, baptized believers, remember the church is a body of baptized believers, united in faith and in fellowship. Those are key words. Look at what he says in verse 41 of Acts chapter 2. Then those who gladly receive the word, there is the faith, there is the faith, those who gladly receive the word, that means they put their faith in Jesus Christ. They put their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. They by faith invited Jesus Christ to come into their lives and they received the word. And they did it with gladness. All oh, the church ought to be a glad people, a happy people, a joy-filled people, an excited people. And they, that there it is, gladly. Oh, 
are. You see some church folk, they act so sad and so sour and so dry and act like they're miserable and down and judgmental and always condemning. God has nothing to do with that. The people of God are supposed to be happy. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be glad and excited. And they gladly receive the word. Look, look here. And they were baptized. They were baptized. We believe in baptism. I'm a part of the body of Christ, the church that we call the Baptist Church. The reason why we call the body of Christ that I'm a part of, the Baptist Church, is because we believe in baptism. We believe in baptism, Baptist baptism. We believe that only believers make up the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and only believers who are baptized are part of the local church. So you receive the word, you exercise faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they were baptized, and look, and they were saved. That same day, God added to the church 3,000 souls. Amen. Amen. God added to the church. It means they were born into the body of Christ that day. And then he gives the church further instructions. Look in the New Testament. It gives us guidance and direction for how the church of today ought to behave and what the church of today ought to do. I believe so many people who said they are the church have gone so far away from the teachings of the New Testament, their directions and instructions given to us in the book of Acts. The book of Acts contains a history of the early church. Look in verse 42. He's talking to the church. Look at verse 42. He's talking about what the church of today ought to be doing. Look here. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That means in Bible study, the word of God, the teachings, these kinds of things I'm sharing with you today. They continue daily in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread. The breaking of bread here means the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. The bread represents his broken body. The cup represents his shed blood. They continued in the breaking of bread and in fellowship and in prayers. If the church is to be the church, listen, if the church is to be the church, they must be a people of prayer. And they continued in prayer prayer. And look at what happened. And fear came over every soul. And look at the power that was manifested in the early church. And many signs and wonders were done by the apostles or by the pastors. And all they believed were together. Listen, God wants us to be together. The reason why I want to suggest to you that the church quite often today doesn't have the power that the early church had, it may be because we don't come together. What if all of us would come together and be on one accord and be united as one body and study the word of God and pray and break bread together and fellowship together? I believe God will continue to work signs and wonders as a manifestation of his power and his presence, his participation in our lives and our worship. But it only comes when we do what the word of God says we ought to do as a church. And we be the people that God has called us to be based upon the teachings of the New Testament. God is calling the church to come together in this season as never before. And the world and the community and the neighborhood we are part of needs a church that is together and on fire for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited about this ministry of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Now listen, God has put in the church what the church needs to do ministry. I'm not just talking about your talents. Your talent to sing or amen. I'm talking about gifts that God has given the church. I gave you a description of the church earlier and I said the people who are part of the church have I, I got certain gifts? Turn with me. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. The book of Ephesians chapter 4.
the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Have you got it? Mm -hmm. Let's look at verse 7 and feel the verse that follow verse 7. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. So Christ has given us gifts according to his grace. If you're a child of God, you have at least one gift that you ought to be using for the ministry of the church. Look at verse 11 and 12. And he gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter number 4 verse 7 and then verse 11 and verse 12. Okay? All right? Okay? You got that. I'm talking about gifts. There are some mentioned there. Let's turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here again, he's talking about gifts. In describing the church, we talk about the gifts. Listen, listen. Let's look here beginning at verse 4. 1 Corinthians, I want to give you time to find it. Chapter 12. Uh, let me start reading with verse 4. All right. We together, 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 4. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. There are differences or diversities of gifts but the same spirit. God has given you as a Christian a gift by his spirit. The Holy Spirit has given you a gift. Are you hearing me? He's given you a gift. There are different ministries or administrations, but the same Lord. No one church is no better than the other. If Jesus Christ is Lord in one place and Lord is the other place, then there is no better church than the other. Quit thinking you're the only one right. Quit thinking you're the only one going to heaven. Quit thinking every other church is wrong. The Bible says there is no difference. As long as we let Jesus Christ be Lord, there is no difference. I'm going to say it again. There is no difference as long as we let Jesus Christ be Lord. Look here. And there are differences of activities, but the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one as uh, the prophet with. For one is given the word of wisdom, the gift, through the Spirit. To another the word of knowledge, the, a gift, through the Spirit. To another the word of faith, through the Spirit, a gift. To another the gift of healing, by the Spirit, a gift. To another the working of miracles, by the same Spirit, a gift. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, and to one in the same spirit, all these things work. All I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, is God is wanting the church to be one body. It is, for as a body has, is one, but many members. He's saying to us over and over and over again, the same God is to be Lord. He's given us spiritual gifts, and we're all to use them for the building up, the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay? All right? We're talking about spiritual gifts again. Okay, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Remember, the church is made up of gifted people. If you're a child of God, you are gifted. Quit saying there's nothing you can do. Quit waiting on an assignment to sing in a choir, work on a committee. Just stir up the gift that God has given you. If you don't know what it is, pray. If you don't know what it is, get busy and learn what it is. Okay? Romans chapter 12. Let me begin around verse number 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them if prophecy, let us prophesy in the proportion of our faith, our ministry, 
Let us use it in our ministry. Uh, those who teach in teaching, he who exhort a gift in exhortation, who give, he who gives a gift during liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Listen, God is calling on me and you and every believer. If you are a believer, God has given you, my dear brother, you, my dear sister, at least one of these gifts that we see mentioned in Romans chapter 12, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in Ephesians chapter 4. And it is your responsibility, your task, your job as a Christian to find your gift and use it for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ, which is the church. And when God comes back, he wants to find me and you and every one of us busy using the gift of the gifts that he's given each and every one of us. I'm going to say this again. If you have been saved, God has given you at least one gift. Amen. And he wants you to be using it for the building up of the church, his body. Let me say to you, it's time to get busy. It's time to get busy. I want to encourage you to pay attention to the teachings that come from the lip of Bishop Gregory from the Word of God and share this teaching with others you come in contact with. Now, over and over in these scriptures I've shared, Paul has been talking about Jesus Christ. He's been calling him Lord. And the word Lord means master. It means ruler. If you want to be a part of the body of Christ, the family of God, a child of God, you got to let him be the Lord of your life. How does one let him become Lord? By inviting him to come into your life and accepting the fact that he died for you at Calvary and shed his blood to cover your sins. If you have not yet done that, you don't have to understand it all. Just believe it all and accept it to be true based on the word of God. If you're that person today and you want your life to change, you want a better life, a better quality of life, you want joy and peace in your life, I want to ask you right now to bow your head with me and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life. Would you do that? Would you? Let's pray this prayer of salvation. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I accept the blood of Jesus shed for me at Calvary as a covering for my sins. And I invite Jesus Christ into my life right now by faith. And I receive him. And I'm saved because Jesus is saving me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, let me know. Inbox me. Hit me up on my website. Amen. God bless you. I'd like to send some more information to you. I'd like to be praying for you. I'd like to communicate with you. If you want to be a part of the worldwide ministry of the St. Paul Baptist Church, just inbox me and say, Bishop, I want to be a part of the ministry. Here are my particulars. Here's how you can get in touch with me. Here's my email. I'd be glad to respond to you. Amen. But remember, I'm praying for you. The church is praying for you. Hope to see you on Sunday if you live in a receding area. 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 1123 Center Street, or you can tune in, live stream or Facebook, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. each and every Sunday morning, the live sanctuary in worship and praise from the St. Paul Baptist Church. Meet us in worship and in word this coming Sunday. Until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In your work, your leisure, you're going and you're coming out from this day forward and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. And I'm Bishop Kirby, St. Paul Baptist Church, Racine, Wisconsin. Thank you.